Lydia Saunders. Keith, come down here. Lydia Saunders is here. Come on in. You know, it's really a, a pleasure. I, I mean, a thrill meeting you. I've been a fan of yours for years. Oh, well, thank you. What's going on? Well, I, what's going on here? Look who's here. Well, Lydia Saunders. Uh, good morning, Mr. Timmons. Oh, no, 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 no formalities now. I mean, this is Keith. I'm Gina. You're Lydia Saunders. I really can't believe it. You know, when your secretary called and said you were going to do a piece on our wedding, I, I was shocked. I mean, did you bring a crew? No, uh, there must be some sort of mistake. I wasn't told anything about a wedding. You wasn't? I, I mean, you weren't? <laughs> no, I'm in Santa Barbara to do a story on something else entirely. Oh, well, then you're in luck. Because Keith and I are getting married. I mean, it's very newsworthy. After all, he is the district attorney of Santa Barbara. He's a very important man, and I'm sure he's going to be running for office this fall. So there's a lot of material you could get here on us. Yeah, I'm sure she's not interested in legal matters. I mean, you have a busy schedule. I'm sure you're not interested in this kind of story, are you? What kind of story are you doing? Well, I'm doing a story on the Capwells, actually. A, a glamour bit, you know. Something along the lines of lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> Well, well, being the Capwell's neighbors, I thought that maybe you might be able to give me some sort of uh, unique insight. Insight? <laughs> well, we could give her a whole lot more than that. I mean, I was a Capwell myself, and we know them oh. from the inside out. After all, don't we, Keith? Keith knows all about them, too. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Uh, I I'd love to hear your observations. Do you have time right now? Oh, sure. Uh, come on in. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you want to hear about first? Well, ah, uh, why don't we start with Mr. Capwell? What can you tell me about him? It's easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, nothing is printable. <laughs> Actually, he's really a very vicious man. You know, he, he's, he's quite ruthless. He'll step on anybody that gets between him and what he wants in life. Anybody. He'll do anything. I mean, he's got the heart of a Frankenstein, the soul of a Dracula. Really, that savage, is he? Well, it's certainly not the impression I got from the publicity on it. Publicity. Well, he's got a whole team of PR people trying to make him look good. I mean, he works them like galley slaves. They, they do their all. They do a good job, too. It's interesting. Well, what about Mrs. Kaplan? Well, which one? I mean, there's been so many. Sophia. Sophia. Well, she's a woman of a certain age, if you know what I mean. And she likes to prey on young men. She used to pray for them, but now that she's got all CC's money, she can get anybody she wants. Isn't that odd? I mean, I was under the impression that she was one of the most popular women in Santa Barbara. Yeah, and I heard that she takes part in all the major charities here. The only reason she does charity work is to meet men. And Mr. Capwell puts up with it? <laughs> the old rooster isn't exactly fit to watch the hen house, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, isn't that an interesting way of putting it? <laughs> uh, let me ask you, Mr. Timmons, what could you tell me of, about Ted Kaplan? Very nice boy. Oh, yeah, he, he's nice enough, but aimless. I mean, you'd call him a no count if it weren't for all that money. Stacey's tried and tried to get him involved with something serious, but all he can think about is party, 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 girls, girls, girls. He's failed at it. Career after career, no matter what Cece does. I've told Keith so many times, you know, if one could only invest in monkey business, Ted would be a great success. <laughs> well, this is certainly a revelation. Uh, you've given me all kinds of material. What can you tell me about the girls? Kelly and Eden. Kelly. It's the same old story, you know, poor little rich girl. She has everything she wants. I mean, the, her father can't do enough for her, but she's never happy. Man after man, failed marriage after failed marriage, and she can't seem to find what she wants. I don't think she'd know it if it proposed to her. Those girls are just plain spoiled. And Eden? Oh, let me, I'll, I'll handle this one. Eden and the man that she's currently married to, uh, are sort of protectors of justice. They fancy themselves heroes. They fight for the underdog. They protect truth, justice in the American way. They're a great embarrassment to both of their families, not to mention the rest of us. Actually, they sound rather stable to me. Dave, if that sort of thing excites you, I guess it's your thing, but uh, they bore me beyond belief. Uh, uh, did either of you know the other boy, Mason? Mason? Yes, I knew him well. 
I mean, he was the one Capwell you could really respect. He was a very special man. I understand he died recently. It's a great loss to all of us. I still hold a large place in my heart for him. Well, <clears throat> you have both been very helpful. <laughs> I've gotten more than enough information. <sighs> well, I'm so glad you were able to come and visit us. By the way, uh, if you are in town on Friday, we're going to be getting married, and you're welcome to come. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's been so nice meeting both nice. of you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I don't think you realize what a national network interview with Lydia Saunders would mean to us. It would make us in this town. Honey, she is a muck raker. If she starts nosing around my office, I shudder to think what she'll find. Well, I guess you can't have Bambi trotting around there now, can you? I mean, she might find out about the little switcheroo with the jewels. Oh, man, don't even breathe that. Don't worry, Keith. That's not what she's here to find out. She's not doing any investigative reporting. She's just here to do a piece on the rich and famous. Baby, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. That's just not her style. I almost feel sorry for the Capwells. Don't quote me. Why? She's out for their blood. I think she's gonna get every drop of it. How do I look? You look very handsome. That's good. Got to impress first day on the job and all. I guess after that it doesn't matter, huh? Oh, no, no, no. After that I startle with my impressive capabilities. Well, you will do just fine. You look quite the executive. Thank you. You know, this... this feels so right. Having you back home, starting a new job. I just feel that everything's going to be okay from now on. Yes? I'm glad. So, look, wish me luck, huh? Of course, of course, you'll knock them down. Yeah, well, let's hope so. I, I gotta run now, but I'll see you tonight. And I'll tell you everything. <laughs> see you later. I have absolutely no legal rights. But, Mijo, you're his father. Well, I know, and I'm going to try to prove that in a court of law, but the lawyers have told me that my chances of gaining joint custody are not very good. Well, there has to be some way around it. Maybe you should try to find a new lawyer. Anybody well, see my keys? Oh, yes, Chip was playing with them just a little oh, while ago. Oh, great. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, let me look well, over here. Well, they're not anywhere around here. Are you really going to do that interview today? Yeah, in half an hour, if I hurry. I thought you didn't like to do stuff like that. Well, you know, Daddy asked me, and I felt like I should, and, and I mean, I, I mean, after all, how bad can it be? But, you know, I really need my keys. Oh. You gotta be careful, buddy. You hurt yourself doing stuff like that. Come here. Did he? No, no, no. He's, he's fine. Oh, Dean. Uh, this flower pot will never be the same again. But it's it. not his fault. You really have to baby-proof the house. Yeah, no, we will. I, I'm gonna put him down now. I think it's... He has to for his nap anymore. Well, if Chip doesn't have my keys, I wonder where they are. That's what I want to know. Well, they're going to be here somewhere. somewhere. There they are. Did you find them? Yes. Oh, thank God. Oh. You know, this is very difficult. <laughs> you know, he pulled the blanket up to his nose. He's, he's ready to go. Look, I really got to go. I'm really in a hurry, otherwise I'm going to be okay. late. Okay. Bye, Bye, I love you. All right. Bye-bye, Carmen. Have, fun. have a good interview. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'm afraid she's still not adjusted to having Chip. Well, that's true, but she's she's doing well. I don't think you need to worry about it. Yeah, but it's a big adjustment for both of you. I know that. And it's very important for this baby to have his father, especially now. He's been through so much, and, and he's just a baby. I know, I know. I promised him, and I promised myself that I was going to be there for him. And no matter what I have to do, I will be. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Uh, I'm meeting Lydia Saunders. Of course, Mrs. Campbell. Right this way. Thank you. The staff is sure excited about having a celebrity here. Hello, <laughs> Sophia. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, there must be some mistake, Mark. Uh, this is Miss Saunders' table. She's coming to interview me. Well, that's very strange. She called me and asked me to meet her here. She didn't tell me you were going to be here. I guess there was a mix-up. Uh, it's okay, Mark. Thank you. I guess the best thing we should do in this situation is you just tell her I'm terribly sorry I couldn't make it, give her my regrets. I wish you wouldn't do that. Oh, excuse no, I really me? wish you'd stay. I've not done this too often, and I really don't like it. She, she's a friend of, uh, a daughter of a friend of mine, and I really, you know, that's the only reason I couldn't say no to her. So please, stay. We don't have to talk about the divorce. We just don't... Can we not talk about the divorce? I'm not going to lie to her. She's going to know you sooner You don't later. lie to her. You just don't bring it up. I, look, I think it's better I leave than put us in this kind of a situation, really. She's here already. Good morning. I'm so glad you both could make it. I'm Thank Lydia you. Saunders. Sophia Capwell. Hello. And uh, this is Corey, my cameraman. Uh, I'll sit up over here and we'll get ready to roll. Great. Well, Cece, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Or don't you even remember? You two know each other? Well, only socially. Her father used to take her to the riding stables. I think it was Abernathy's stables, if I remember, right? That's right, he mm -hmm. did. You were a bit of a tomboy then. <laughs> oh, well, you have a remarkable memory. A little too good. I had high hopes that you would have forgotten. Uh, that was what's fondly called my awkward state. More like awful. Well, you certainly have grown that. <laughs> well, isn't it nice you two know each other? Should make the interview go easier. Well, I certainly hope that we'll get to know each other before it's all over. So, are you all set to start? Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. I like to be as informal as possible. So, we'll uh, do the opening introduction just standing here, and then we'll sit down for the rest of it. All right? Okay. Corey, are we all set? All set. Here we go, then. All right. <clears throat> mm. Cece and Sophia Capwell, one of the wealthiest couples in America. They've got it all, it seems. Beautiful homes, a loving family, and a marriage that's the envy of almost everyone that knows them. Mrs. Capwell, how long have you two been married? We uh, would have had an anniversary next month. Would have had? Cece and I were just divorced. Look who's here. What can I do for you, Brandon? Hi, Cruz. Can I talk to you and Eden for a minute? Uh, well, Eden's not here right now, but you can you can talk to me if you'd like. Okay. Come on in. Looks like you're just moving in. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, buddy, we're just moving out. Yeah, we do a lot of that, too. Uh-huh. Well, uh, have a seat and uh, tell me what, what can I do for you. <sighs> I know my mom and Keith are everybody's favorite people in the world, but I love them both a lot. Well, I'm sure you do. The thing is, they're getting married on Friday, and they don't think anybody's coming to their wedding. Mom's real upset, so I've been asking people on my own. Cece and Sophia and Kelly said they'd come, and I was hoping you and Eden would come, too. It's kind of a surprise wedding instead of a surprise party, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 I understand. Nothing would make my mom happier than to have a lot of people there. Uh -huh. And I can tell that it uh, means a lot to you, too, doesn't it, Brandon? Because it means so much to my mom. When my son is your age, I hope he cares as much about me as you obviously do for Keith and your mom. Them if I can. Will you guys come? Uh, Friday, you said? Yes, at 4 o'clock, St. Edward's Church. Well, we'll see why not. In fact, you can count on it. We'll be there. Thanks, Cruz. That's swell. And don't say anything to Mom and Keith. I want it to be a real surprise. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hello, oh, son. Hey, how'd the interview with Lydia Saunders go? Went fine. Your mother was there, so she interviewed us both together. Oh, yeah? Mom was there? Yeah, Mom. That's my mail. Lydia neglected to tell me that your mother's going to be there, so it surprised both of us. Well, maybe that was her tactic. 
You know, I heard Lydia Saunders is like a real barracuda. What are you talking about? People who say that don't even know her. She's a brilliant newswoman with a good head on her shoulders. So why is she doing this kind of interview with us in the first place? I don't know, and I don't really well, care. Well, it just seems like the type of interview Robin Leach would do. I mean, I don't know. The first time I ever heard of her doing something totally meaningless. Me? Meaningless? A piece on me, the family, that's me. Thank you very no, much. No, I don't mean meaningless. It's like a fluff piece. She has a reputation of being a hard news reporter. But then maybe somebody put the gag on her. Maybe, you know, she got the motive. Will you knock it off? Would you please knock it off? People do chat. Look at you for crying out loud. First you're into horses, then you're into wine, then you're into the lair, then you're, you're working on stocks. I mean, you're trying to find your own style. It's not trying to find a style. It's, it's... Lydia Saunders, she already has her style. Or maybe she wants to find another one. Yeah, right. You know, I've never heard you defend a reporter before, Dad. I'm not. I'm just standing up for freedom of choice. Oh, <laughs> never heard you do that before either. I had no idea that you were going to be the one interviewing me. Really, I thought they told you that when they arranged the whole thing. I hope it's all right. Oh, it's fabulous. I'm delighted. I'm a very big fan of yours. And I know my father knows your family, but we've never had the chance to get acquainted. Well, it's not too late, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I must be honest with you, though. I'm not very good at these things, and when my father asked me to do it, I tried to talk him out of it because I, I don't feel very comfortable, you know? Well, I'm glad that you're doing it. And don't worry, you're gonna do just fine. You ready, Corey? Yeah, we got speed. Go okay. for it. Don't you have a seat. Oh. <clears throat> We're talking with Eden Capwell, eldest daughter of Cece and Sophia Capwell, here at the luxurious Orient Express restaurant, high atop the Capwell Hotel in Santa Barbara. This is a restaurant that Eden created and manages. So tell us, Eden, what was it like growing up in Santa Barbara? Oh, it was wonderful. It, it was really great. The, the mountains and the deserts are, are less, than a, less than an hour away. Uh -huh. And, and uh, the beach is right there. And everybody knew everybody else. It was really a wonderful place to grow up. And certainly very privileged. You grew up on one of the most beautiful estates in America. Mm -hmm. And tell us about some of the other houses that your family owns, besides the mansion here in Santa Barbara. Well, my father owns a house in um, the south of France. Is that all? No, no, he has a small chalet in Gestad and a couple places here in the United States. Oh, where? Palm Springs, uh, Denver, Santa Fe, just vacation places, really. Mm -hmm. And see, there's the uh, family yacht, the corporate jet, and how many helicopters? Oh, uh, just one. As a young child, what was it like having all of that at your disposal? Well, I was very fortunate, and I do think it's all because my father and my mother taught me very good values. Tell me truthfully, did you have anything to complain about at all? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just the usual stuff, like normal kids. <sighs> well, it sounds like the perfect childhood to me. One the rest of us could only fantasize about. Mayfair Caterers? This is C.C. Capital calling. No, I just want to go over the last minute details with you for the party. Yeah, we talked about hamburgers and potato salad. What about the soda and hot dogs? I like hot dogs. Hi, Uncle Steve. My, what a cheerful greeting. Who are you talking to? Me? Yes, you. When? Oh, think back. You were on the phone, I walked through the door, you hung up. Oh, that. Yes. I was getting the weather report. I thought I might go surfing tomorrow. But you don't surf. No, but it's time I started. How can I be a California boy and not surf? Don't kid me, kiddo. You were calling up the weather department? The weather department? Asking him if it was going to rain hot dogs? Did you call up the 976 number? No, sir. I hope not. You promised your mother, and we're both counting on you to keep your word. And I have, too. Believe me, Uncle Keith. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Honest. Wh what? what? Gee. Gee. Gee, you're twisting Gee, my arm. Gee, how late it is. I gotta go. I would, hey, what's the rush? Surf's up.
How's Ma? You guys talk? No. Oh. Time before the interview. The result was difficult for both of us. What do you mean? Your mother insisted on telling uh, Lydia that we're divorced. She did? Mm-hmm. On camera, in front of God and the viewing audience. I wish she hadn't. The publicity isn't very good for the company. I mean, the stocks are sensitive enough. I still can't believe this is happening. I don't see why you can't make things work out, Dad. Give it I. We didn't, then it's over. Now, I don't believe that either. Well, you better believe it, because I'm through talking to your mother. I've tried everything. Your mother doesn't want this marriage. She's made it very clear. Well, so what are you going to do? I'm going to play golf in the morning. And I'm going to get on with my life, just like your mother's going to get on with her life. Look, I know it's hard on you and Eden and Kelly, but you're just, you're going to have to accept it, that's all. Is that what you've done? Just sure. accepted it? That's right. You're not going to try and change anything? Nope. Nope. I'm not going to about to force your mother back into a relationship that she feels suffocated in. I'm not about to do that. What do you want? What? Of course I didn't. No, I will handle it right now. You don't give any information to anybody. What's the matter? Olivia Saunders is asking questions about our financial position, saying I gave her permission. Where are you going? Where am I? The what the hell she thinks she's doing is where I'm going. Honey, it is not some childish prank. The kid is hiding something. I walk in, he's on the phone, he hangs up without saying goodbye, he's hiding something. Hiding something? Brandon? Now, come on, he, he's too little for that. Well, maybe he's hiding a little something, but he's hiding something, trust me. Suppose he has a girlfriend, do you? I mean, maybe that's why he got off the phone, because he, he was embarrassed. You know how kids are, they're very shy at that age. I don't know, kid. I was never shy myself, especially as a child. You were never a child. Honey, he's not talking about girls. He was talking about hot dogs. Hot dogs? Do you think he was calling the 976 number? Gee! Why would hot dogs bring a 976 number to your mind, darling? I don't know. It just does. Relax. He wasn't doing that. He denied it. I asked him. Well, it's, it's got to be something. Look, he promised me he would never call the 976 number again. And he's never broken a promise to me, but who knows? I mean, this does not look very good. Brandon? Brandon, will you come down here? Keith and I want to talk to you. I don't want him to feel like we're invading his privacy. I don't want him to think that we don't trust him. You know, the good old days were better. You could put locks on phone dials. That's why we have to trust the little sucker. You know, that says a whole lot more about you than it does about Brandon. You know, we're not living in a police state here. We will be. Comes a revolution, babe, you know? What's up? Sweetheart, Keith and I want to talk to you. Can it wait? I'm watching TV. No, it can't wait. Now, do you remember when Keith walked into the room and you were on the phone and you hung up suddenly? No. I'm gonna kill you! You kidding me? The Weather Bureau. The Weather Bureau, you remember that? Oh, then, sure. Yes. Well, uh, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna know. Uh, tell me honestly. Were you calling 976? Were you calling that number again? No, I told Keith I wasn't. Well, then who were you calling? I told him, the Weather Service. Oh, that's right, the Weather Service. You were wanted to surf, right? Finding out if there were going to be hot dogs there that day. Hot dogs is the word that they use in surfing. He's got us coming and going. What's the big deal? Gee, you guys, can I have any privacy? I'm not a kid anymore. Don't I have any rights at all in this house? Sure you do, sweetheart. Trust me, it was an okay call. All right. All right he's got us. Look, I... We're snooping. Let him go. I apologize. I'm sorry. I mean, we were not really meaning to pry into your private life. We just, we were just curious, that's all. It's okay. I forgive you, both of you. Oh, thanks. Very big of you, Brian. I got a bit get back into you. I feel terrible. I don't I feel like I've been had. 
all done? Just about. I cannot believe what you and Carmen accomplished. You know, I feel really guilty. Oh, well, don't feel bad. I mean, there'll be plenty of work to do at the other house. In fact, you can be in charge of all the unpacking if you like. Oh, now I feel even worse. It serves you right for running out on us. So how'd your interview go, anyway? I mean, it was wonderful. And contrary to popular belief, which I'm sure is your belief, she's a very charming lady. I'm not sure what belief that is that I hold. I'm not even sure who this interview is with. Why didn't you uh, fill me on the detail? Mama, what, 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 uh, what is a suitcase for? Don't worry, I'm not going to run away from home. Well, it certainly looks like it. Well, I'm not. Actually, I'm going to spend the night with a friend. I thought you two might enjoy spending your last night in this house alone together. Hmm? What friend is this? I don't oh, think no. I know the guy. That's very sweet of you. Oh, I get much sweeter. I'm even going to offer to take Ch Chip with me. So you two can really uh, concentrate on each other. How about that? Well, I... I don't know. What do you what do you think? Oh, well, I'm not going to be the one to make the decision. Well, I'm not asking you to make the decision. I just wonder how you how you feel about well, it. Well, I mean, if, if it's something that you'd like to do, then then I'd like to do it. But if you don't want to do it, well, then I'm, I, don't, I don't really you know, I'm okay. Thank you. It's a great idea, and I think we would love to spend our last evening in this house alone. So is it any easier for you now that the divorce is final? Well, uh, maybe it's easier because I've, I've made a decision finally. And I think it's the right decision, so that's a bit of a relief. But easier in a general sense, Kelly, no, because the divorce is just a legal action. It doesn't really deal with the feelings he and I have with each other. Someone you know? Yeah, it's my wife and my mother-in-law over there. Look, I, I'd like you to meet them. Fine. Just let me make a quick phone call first. All right, yeah. What about you? I want to know about you. I don't know. I went back to Jeffrey hoping we'd be able to, to make things all right again. But it's not. Jeffrey thinks so. Can you? I feel like I'm lying. I'm lying to him. I'm pretending to myself. Mama, how did you do it? How did you finally tell Daddy that you didn't love him anymore? Oh, honey, I didn't. I would never tell him that because I still do. Then why? Because I have to be by myself and I couldn't live with him anymore. But whatever I do, whatever everybody else does, you can't base your decisions on that. You have to do what's right for you. That's what I thought I was doing, what was right, but it doesn't feel right. I'm miserable. Jeffrey's trying as hard as he can. He loves you so much. But it has to work both ways, doesn't it, Mama? I need to ask you, I need to ask you a very, very personal question. Go ahead. When you finally, when you finally divorced Daddy, was it, was it because of TJ? Was it, was he the reason? Kelly, your father asked me the same thing. Why is it so inconceivable to everybody that I might be doing this for myself? Why do I need his man as an excuse? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry. I do not want TJ to break up your marriage. I know him. He's not worth it. Jeffrey and I were having problems long You know before. what? I don't think so. I really doubt it because I know how that man operates. I don't, I don't think that you do. I think that you were still too involved. Kelly, that is an insult. I used to be able to talk to you about anything in the world. But because it's TJ, you and I cannot be honest with each other. I need to talk to you. I've never felt so lost in my entire life. Jeffrey loves you. TJ isn't even capable of loving. How can you say that? All right, you're right. We can talk about this. Do you know why? Because you don't listen to me. Appointment and I can't break it. I hate this. I hate the fact that there might be one thing in the whole world that we can't discuss. I hate that you seem so unhappy. I'll be all right. Listen, call me later. Would you please? I will. I will. I will. We will talk.
Hiya. What are you doing here? Are you following me? Yeah, I am following you. And I'm going to continue to follow you if you keep running away from me. TJ. Look, baby, I know you're trying to deny all the feelings you got for me, okay? And I know you have them. Look at me. You know how much I love you. And I've tried to deny it. I've tried to stop thinking about it, and I can't. And I know you can't either. I don't care what I have to do. I'm not letting you out of my life. How do you get out of here? And I'm going to have you thrown out of here. Try it. So what is it going to take to get into your head? Kelly is back home with me now. Hmm? Or didn't you know that? Why don't you tell him? Yeah, Kelly, why don't you tell me? Please believe, TJ. Chinese food just makes me amorous. I must be the MSP here. Everything makes you amorous, Keith. It doesn't matter if it's pizza or a Hungarian goulash. It all has the same effect. I think you should see a food psychiatrist. I'm beyond help, baby. I am, I am, I am a, a gourmet of love. Right, you know, look, you're gonna get that chicken chow made all over <laughs> me. No. Oh, no, Keith. Oh, no, Jess. Oh, Jess, then I eat it off. You got it all over me. Honey, yeah. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'll take you to Shanghai, cover you from head to toe. Okay? I think you already did. Where are you going? I have something I have to tell you. Uh-huh. You're not gonna like it. And I think it's better that I tell you standing up. I never make a big decision over chow mein. I made the decision before I started eating the chow mein, okay? There's gonna be some new rules to playing this game. New rules for what game? If you're talking about the newspaper delivery boy and the board housewife, I'm not going to be rude. No, no, no. I'm talking about the chase to the bedroom, the hop in the sack, the scurry to the boudoir. Hmm. What are the new rules? Well, we're not going to play anymore. Interesting switch. How do we play this game? We don't. We're not having sex anymore, Keith. No sex? Are you kidding me? Well, well not till after we're married. You're kidding me! I'm not kidding you. No, I, 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 I want you to respect me. I, I respect want you. Respect to... you? Respect you? Respect you? This is what I'm talking about, Keith. This kind of reaction. You have absolutely no respect for chastity. No, I think it's a mortal sin. Well, you're going to have to rethink your thinking, Mr. Casanova, because I'm telling you, this is it. Sex is a thing of the past until the day we start our future. I buy you another drink? Excuse me? Well, the maitre d' told me that your name is T.J. Daniels and that you're part owner of the lair. Nope, the maitre d' wasn't lying. I didn't think so. He has an honest face. You know who I am? Oh, yeah, I know who you are. You got a famous face. I've seen your program a few times. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I have a wide audience. So, um, why are we asking the maitre d' about me? Well, an attractive man. I was curious. About what? Well, I bet you know a lot of people in Santa Barbara. I'm doing a piece on the Capwells, among others. Uh-huh. The thing is about it that nobody really knows how little that piece is. You know, it's hard sometimes to keep them small. The more you find out about people, the bigger the stories get. Usually, the more interesting. I understand you're connected to at least three Capwells. Ah. Now, you finally got down to it. Ha <laughs> figures. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Let's get something real straight from the beginning so we don't have any kind of misunderstanding down the line, OK? Sure. I don't want you to think you'd come floating in here and sit down next to me and pump me for a lot of information on the Capitals. I don't care who it is, because um, I really have no interest in getting involved in an expose. Well, sounds like you're seriously connected. 
At least we know where we stand, don't we? Yes, we do. This is great chicken. It's an old recipe for us. You made this, Eden? Mm. Oh, I'm proud of you. I used to hang around the kitchen all the time, you know, talking to her about my life's ambitions and my goals and everything I wanted in life. And she would tell me how important it was for me to be an excellent cook. Really? Well, you, it's, I'm licking my fingers. Mm. Well, you know it, I am in my heart. Do you feel regretful, though, about all those ambitions and goals you had to let go by the wayside while you were busy learning to make this incredible chicken? Let me tell you something. I've got you, and I've got Chip, and I've got a beautiful new house. I just wish we didn't have to go through all the trouble of getting chips at the court no. and all that. I wish don't, it don't, easier. don't let it get to you tonight, baby. Not the last night in this place, you know. Well, tomorrow is a starting new era. Maybe we'll get lucky. We are lucky. We're very lucky. I know. You know, as much as I love the new house, I'm really going to miss this place. Yeah, we had some great times here. Mm, you bought this house for me. I mean, I can never imagine leaving it. Yeah, well, you know, maybe we won't have to. As long as my mom is living here, we can probably come and visit, although we won't be able to eat on the floor anymore. <laughs> I just hope we have as many wonderful memories in the new house as we have in this one. Well, it's up to us. I got a feeling we will, starting a family and all. I have, like, a few babies around and they'll warm the house up. I like that. I do think it's important, though, that we say goodbye to this place that's been so good to us in a proper fashion. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, it's a, it's a process, and it, it starts by clearing a horizontal space. Oh, but I wasn't through with my potato salad. Actually, uh, you were. The times that I spent wanting as much as I want you. It's not the passion that I see. We've both been here before. Too late to worry where we go from here tonight. Jeffrey, I'm so glad you're home. Oh, hey, hey, what is it? What's wrong? I'm so sorry about what happened with TJ this afternoon. I didn't ask him to sit down at my table. I know, I know. You said that already. I know, but I want you to believe me. Hey. I wouldn't have ruined this day for you for anything, and I'm so sorry that happened. I believe you, Kelly. I believe you. I do. I believe you. Well, this is a surprise. Come in, Cece. I want some answers, Lydia. To what? To what? I want to know what the hell you were doing going to the vice president of my company asking about our financial position. What I was doing was a profile on you. I wanted the complete picture. And that is a contradiction in terms. You could have asked me. True, but I know how busy you are. I didn't want to bother you with trivial details. I certainly did not mean to upset you. I don't like it. Then I'm, I apologize. <laughs> but off the record, why are you so mad? Really? On the record, I've got nothing to hide. I didn't think that you did. So, can we still be friends? <laughs> How would you like to go out for a nightcap? 
I'd love to. But, unfortunately, I've got a full day tomorrow and a lot of homework to do tonight. Can I take a rain check on it? Yes, yeah, you can. Sorry I came barging in. No, you're not. Oh, but you are more than welcome to stop by whenever you feel like it. I really do appreciate your input on this story. I'm eager to see you. Will you ask me out again? Soon? Yes. Good night, Cesar. So you never did tell me how your interview was. Well, it was interesting. I mean, I was really nervous about it, but I think it's because I was saw her on TV, you know what I mean? But I think that when people see Lydia on TV, they think she's, she's intimidating, and she's not. She's... Wait a second. We're talking about Lydia, not Lydia, Saunders. Yeah, why? Well, I know her, Eden. I know her work, and I'm not a fan. Why? A long time ago, she did a story on the INID. It, it turned out to be a first-class hatchet job. As a result of it, five very good agents lost their jobs. The agency had to spend months working double time to undo the damage. Are you saying she lied? Well, she didn't, she didn't lie exactly, but she manipulated the facts to make it seem as if the agency were corrupt. And, uh, you know, it reflected on everybody, myself included. She's an example of the worst kind of yellow journalism there is. Well, it really doesn't sound like you know her. I mean, have you ever met her? Oh, yeah, I met her, up close and personal. She tried to use me to get information on the people that I worked with. Well, that's terrible. Damn right, it's terrible. It's really, you gotta watch what you say to her. She's a very dangerous lady. Tonight, inside communist Hungary, will the demand for more democracy lead to a Soviet crackdown? This and all the important news of the day on NBC Nightly News. Thank you.